I would like to start by expressing thanks for those very uh, generous words on the part of Robson Andraji of the CNI, and I would also like to thank everyone else on the Brazilian side that have worked uh, to make today's encounter possible. And all of those who are responsible for this event today, foremost here from the U.S. side, Tom Donahue uh, of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. But, of course, it is a great honor for me to be here participating with all of you today in the company of Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, who has been such a strong supporter of enhanced Brazil-U.S. ties. So thank you so much, Madam Secretary. I'm very honored to open this seminar as Presidents Obama and Rousseff meet in Washington to enhance a bilateral relationship that is increasingly based on trust, common values, and a widening agenda. Innovation has become a priority item, and I'm very pleased to participate in an innovative seminar. Innovative because it is conceived as a two-track event, as a trade and economic track where we will be looking at trade and investment, energy, competitiveness, but also a scientific, technological, and educational track that will look at Science Without Borders, this innovative and uh, daring uh, program that President Dilma Rousseff has established for um, increasing the opportunities for Brazilian students to study abroad. We're also going to be looking at research, innovation, labor, cooperation, aerospace, and ICT. Since President Obama visited Brazil a year ago, a number of important developments have taken place. We have three uh, top-level dialogues, the Global Partnership Dialogue that brings together Secretary of State Clinton and myself, the Economic and Financial Dialogue between Secretary of the Treasury and Minister of Finance, and the Strategic Dialogue on Energy that has uh, brought together Department of Energy on the U.S. side and the Ministry for Mines and Energy on the Brazilian side. We have also met under the new Trade and Economic Cooperation uh, Agreement uh, that um, unites the USTR on the U.S. side and the uh, Foreign Ministry and the Ministry for Trade and Development on the Brazilian side. And this new mechanism has uh, offered an opportunity for us to look at a broad agenda, including agricultural, industrial services, regulatory matters that are already producing results. I am particularly happy that a um, subgroup on investment has been created uh, to look at uh, investment opportunities in the two countries under this agreement. Science and technology has also been an area where many advances have taken place. Uh, the Bilateral Commission met a few weeks ago in Brazil. Uh, Minister Haup and his counterpart, Mr. Holdren, uh, looked at an ambitious program of action that will be signed uh, officially uh, this afternoon. And under this framework, uh, we are looking at a working group on innovation, again, uh, which seems to be one of the new items in this new narrative that we are establishing for a true partnership for the 21st century between Brazil and the United States. There are several other fronts where we have been working together with the United States. I think the Open Government Partnership is a very inspiring one, where Presidents Obama and Rousseff um, met uh, in New York on the margins of the United Nations General Assembly to launch an initiative that is voluntary, open to those who uh, would like to join um, around common values of transparency, um, improving government practices, exchanging um, successful practices, and we're very happy that um, we will be hosting in Brasilia on the 16th of April a second edition of this uh, exercise, and that Secretary Clinton will be there to participate on the U.S. side along with many other leaders. When the two presidents meet today, they will be reviewing these developments and looking at the future to enhance cooperation on uh, numerous fronts. Of course, um, we are still under the impact of the second wave of a world economic crisis that has affected the world economy indiscriminately, and no country has been entirely immune. While Brazil and some other emerging economies have managed to continue growing above world average, uh, it is um, necessary to uh, recognize that we are also feeling pressures and having to adjust 
and look at ways of uh, maintaining the rhythm of growth that we have experienced in the past few years, growth that has been um, of a particularly beneficial type in as much as it has uh, contributed to reduce poverty and to offer uh, job and employment opportunities to an increasing number of resilience. But the interesting news and positive news is that notwithstanding the economic downturn, trade between Brazil and the United States has continued to grow. Um, it's true that the, the composition of this trade is not ideal. Uh, to a certain degree, it represents a challenge for Brazil. Uh, the surplus for the United States has been increasing steadily. Today, Brazil represents the seventh country with which the United States has uh, the largest trade surplus. And the composition of our exports to the U.S. has uh, curiously um, gone back to a stage where we are selling more commodities and fewer manufactured goods. So this is something we have to look at very seriously, and we will. At the same time, um, I think it's worth noting that investment has been developing in an interesting way as well. Uh, Brazilian investment in the United States has been growing to the point where last year we invested 40 percent of what the U.S. invested in Brazil, which is a much higher percentage than uh, we had experienced in previous years or decades. Now, a point that President Dilma has been making is that we are confident in the capacity of the U.S. economy to bounce back. This is a country of extraordinary resourcefulness, flexibility, high-level academic institutions, capacity to reinvent itself. As Brazil prepares for what we would like to see as a qualitative leap in terms of industrial competitiveness, we see the U.S. as a privileged partner. Also, as we transition into a more multipolar world, there's no doubt that the U.S. will remain a formidable power. And Brazil, I think, also has numerous strengths. Today, we are the sixth economy, sixth largest economy in the world, an energy and agricultural powerhouse, a country endowed with natural resources and increasingly sophisticated manpower, a thriving democracy, an agent for peace in the region and worldwide. As you know, we have been working very intently to uh, enhance South American integration. And this is a project which has been advancing at a very accelerated pace. Last year, uh, the constitutive treaty that creates the community of South American nations came into effect. And we are quickly transforming South America into a zone of peace, cooperation, sustainable development, development with social justice. We are tackling in ways that we have been unable to do in, pri in, in previous years and decades the greatest challenge of all in our region, which is reducing inequality and poverty. And for the first time in our history in Brazil and in many other countries in the region, we actually look at the future with a prospect of achieving this goal, reducing poverty, eliminating uh, extreme poverty within a foreseeable uh, time frame. But notwithstanding this very strong anchor in South America and in the region, Brazil today experiences also, probably for the first time in its history, what we could describe as true global outreach. Um, we have diplomatic relations with all 193 other United Nations members, and we have uh, the diplomatic presence, the business presence, the people-to-people -people contact that uh, take us to Africa, the Middle East, Europe, the Far East, even the Pacific Islands today uh, are uh, places where, with which we have been uh, collaborating. As we witness the transformation towards a more multipolar world uh, configuration, Brazil has been paying special attention to all the poles in this configuration. And when I say this, I think it's important to highlight that we have not privileged new emerging poles uh, in uh, comparison with more traditional partners with which we have engaged historically. So at the same time, President Dilma Rousseff can participate very actively in a BRICS summit, as she has just um, done in New Delhi a few weeks ago, 
and keep a very strong channel of dialogue with the United States, with the European Union, uh, with which we uh, have developed a, a strategic partnership relationship with Japan and with others in the developed world. In fact, perhaps Brazil's unique um, comparative advantage in this emerging world order is that we would like to be a constructive, peaceful link between and among the different poles. And this is something that perhaps we are especially well positioned to do. Um, we are a country devoid of weapons of mass destruction, a peace-loving country, a country that believes in diplomacy, in dialogue, in tolerance. I'm extremely honored that Secretary Clinton has agreed to open this seminar today. We have met frequently and spoken often on a host of pressing world issues. As contacts between government officials of our two countries intensify, we are learning to better appreciate the very strong affinities that bind us together, as Hillary has just described this morning so eloquently. And I'm particularly proud uh, that one of the mechanisms that was created while I was ambassador here in Washington, which is the Joint Program of Action to Eliminate Racial Discrimination, has taken on such a life of itself, um, and we remain extremely committed to the success of this mechanism. We have also managed to better understand the gaps in knowledge and to learn how to deal with differences in a mature way. A recent study produced by the Council on Foreign Relations looking at Brazil in today's uh, international perspective actually mentions the word mature or, or maturity several times when looking at the relationship between uh, Brazil and the United States. And I think it's a good word to describe the spirit in which we elaborate this new narrative, in which we construct uh, this new partnership. No doubt, there's much more we can accomplish together for the benefit of our two societies, our region and the world. But I'm confident that a new partnership for the 21st century is being forged on an extremely solid basis. Brazil and the U.S. are the two largest democracies in the Americas, the two largest economies, two multi-ethnic societies that look to the future with assurance. Today's seminar, in parallel with a meeting between the two heads of state in the White House, represents a special opportunity for discussions that will help to open new avenues for cooperation. And before concluding, let me thank the U.S. for responding in such a positive way to the Science Without Borders program. There is no better way to develop a solid partnership between our two societies than establishing conditions for the youth of our countries to be in contact with one another. And let me also say that drawing from yesterday's meeting between the President and a group of Brazilian businessmen here in Washington, I would uh, reiterate what she said last night. Uh, one always learns a lot when one interacts with the private sector, with civil society, with academia. Uh, and this is a spirit in which the government officials uh, participating in the seminar uh, will uh, take part. Uh, I am sure that many new ideas, many new initiatives, many inspiring projects will come out of these discussions. Thank you very much. Thank you.